the first key takeaway is not to panic here. I think it's given what's happening in the markets, people say, well, I need to do something about what's happening. And often the best advice can be sit on the sidelines and actually just watch what's happening. What you are gonna see in the market now is real world effects. Companies are gonna be going bankrupt um, and gonna be put under a lot of pressure. And um, so I think you need to be cognizant of that. And if you look back over South Africa's history, we haven't really traded this cheaply in probably nearly 40, 50 years. You probably shouldn't be selling equity here. You should be buying more equity if you've got cash. Good day. I'm Hamilton van Bredaar, Head of Retail Sales at Prudential Investment Managers. And with me today, I have got Ross Biggs, Head of Equity. And Ross is gonna give us some insight into the fall in the equity market over over the last month or so, and what Prudential is going to be or is doing uh, about that uh, asset class. We've seen a, a massive unprecedented sell-off in the global equity market, the US and the rest of the world, as well obviously as the South African market. So Ross, this begs the question, what would be the immediate and then longer term impact of the pandemic on the market? Particularly looking at say the different sectors of the market. Yeah. Um, so I think what you first need to do is distinguish th what is happening in the market at the moment compared to what ha happened in the global financial crisis. So in the global financial crisis, what we had there was the financial markets having an impact on the real world economy. What we have today is the real world economy having a very big impact on financial markets. Um, so you've got a lot of companies um, globally who are worrying about their revenue over the next six months, 12 months, 18 months. Um, and that's, uh, that's caused a worry about earnings and balance sheet risk for companies in the real world. So if you look at hospitality companies today, you look at um, airlines, they're worrying about whether their balance sheets can actually weather uh, the next three months, six months, 12 months. and um, that's obviously very concerning for them and what they often do is they do a sort of a, a worst case scenario. So if we go back uh, two months ago, you know, the markets were sort of saying, you know, this is something that we can recover from over the next three months. What we're looking at now is companies saying, actually, um, you know, how long could this take? It could take 18 months. It could take, uh, you know, things might only return to normal when we have a vaccine for the, for the coronavirus. The issue for companies today, real world companies is, how strong is my balance sheet? What are my cash flows going to look like over the next uh, few months? Um, and that is what the financial markets are trying to grapple with at the moment. They're trying to just, just decipher which companies actually are going to see it through to the end of this versus those companies that um, could see permanent capital damage or loss. So, so Ross, uh, you know, in 2008, you could have hidden in, in gold stocks. Uh, you know, our market today has, has fallen across the board. Maybe take us through the impact on, on the different sectors. Yeah, so what, what is uh, um, critical to realize is that companies today are worrying about their balance sheets and liquidity. And so it really is a liquidity event. People are seeing their working capital getting uh, stretched to, to large levels that they would have never sort of forecast. Um, and so the real world today is saying, I need cash urgently. I need to be able to pay um, my creditors. I need to be able to pay my staff. Uh, they're grappling with questions of, you know, how long do I, I ask my staff uh, to sort of go on holiday without a salary? And so, so it's, a, it's a fight for cash. Um, and that sort of uh, need for liquidity has filtered through into the financial market. So um, today the, the financial markets are going, we need liquidity. And um, what we saw a few weeks ago was initially the markets go, well, um, actually, let's, we see there's a problem happening in the financial markets. Let's go hide in the quality assets. So let's go hide in cash. Let's go hide in U.S. high yield, uh, in U.S. Treasury bills. Um, let's go hide in gold. We saw some sort of upward pressure in gold. Now what the market has got to is actually this could last a lot longer than we were expecting. And we have a need for any liquidity. And so what you're seeing is liquidity getting drawn from all assets, from quality assets, from uh, low quality assets. And so what we're seeing now is U.S., you know, sort of considered the safest assets in the world, gold and, and U.S. Treasury bills. Those prices are now selling off 
uh, uh, quite aggressively. And so both in the real world and in the financial markets, people are looking for liquidity. Ross, the, uh, it does seem to be that there have effectively been two black swan events. You had the coronavirus and you had a massive fallout in, in the price of oil. So are there, are there perhaps several sectors that will directly benefit from this fallout in the, in the oil price? So th that's a question that a lot of people are asking at the moment. They're trying to you know, work out who benefits. You know, could, for instance, plastics companies or chemicals companies or agricultural companies benefit because some of the input costs are being reduced now? Um, so obviously with oil price coming down, you know, maybe plastics companies benefit because their main input is, is oil. Uh, is, is oil. Um, I think that's very sort of first level thinking. So that's the sort of step that the market is making at the moment. Uh, you know, you see, you go into a pick and pay today and you see the shelves fairly empty. Um, and so what the market is saying is, let's buy pick and pay shares because, you know, they're obviously doing very well with the amount of sales that they're making at the moment. I think that's very short term thinking. And, you know, yes, pick and pay and the, 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 the grocery retailers will benefit over the next uh, few months or year. But, um, you know, if you if you look back, if you look forward five years, actually, you know, they're going to be in a similar position, similar glide path, I think, to what they would have been. So you've actually got to think further. You've got to say, actually, today, what share prices have come down enough that I'm going to make a very good return over the next five years, not what is my return going to look like over the next six months or 12 months. Ross, over the last effectively six weeks or two months, we've seen a rapid depreciation of the rand relative to the dollar, in fact, relative to, to virtually every developed market currency. Um, that one does one make think is that how do you how do you manage such a volatile currency in your portfolio? So how do you um, handle the depreciation of the rand? In our equity portfolios, so so we think uh, the rand is is very undervalued at the moment, uh, probably in the order of of twenty percent undervalued. So um, yes, this uh, this shock has has definitely caused people to raise liquidity, and um, you know one of the first places they look is is lower quality assets. So you know take money away from emerging markets, and that's obviously given South Africa's open economy. Um, and that the RAND trades fairly easily, that's a place where um, the market's going to go to try and raise some liquidity. So that puts pressure on our stock market and that puts pressure on our exchange rate. But that is the case for all emerging markets. If you look at the Mexican peso at the moment, that's setting off massively. So we, I think, are no different to, to many other uh, emerging markets today. How do we manage that in our portfolios? Well, you know, the one consideration is, is maybe you know, do you take advantage of that cheap currency by bringing some offshore assets back to South Africa? So that's one thing we're sort of considering at the moment, uh, particularly in our in our unit trusts. Um, the other thing is, you know, just assessing, um, uh, you know, the impact on on companies. So what we're seeing in particular is a company like Anna Bush, where they are mismatched on their debt versus their their income. So they generate a lot of earnings from emerging market. Uh, countries, but they've funded their business with hard currency debt, so debt in euros, debt in dollars. Um, and those mismatches can put companies under quite a bit of stress. Over time, earnings drives price um, in, an, in an equity portfolio. And when you have uh, black swan events like this, you'll obviously find that the, there'll be a very big impact on corporate earnings. Yeah. So what is Prudential doing uh, about trying to withstand some of these shocks in their portfolios, the equity portfolios? Um, so I think the first thing to consider is that what we focus on when we make any investment is a three to five year time horizon. So when we buy a company, you know, we're not trying to guess what the earnings might do or the price might do over the next year. We're looking on a three to five year time horizon. Um, you know, so it's very easy to, to wake up today and say, well, it's obvious that you know casino earnings are going to be falling dramatically over the next year. Uh, sell the sell the shares of those companies. That might be exactly the wrong thing to be doing at this point because uh, I think it's now obvious to everyone that you know earnings of certain companies are going to be going down. Um, the trick for us to work out is what companies come out the other side of of. Um, of what we're seeing in the market today. So that for us is what is critical, is um, trying to work out which companies actually come out uh, 
in a decently strong position to be able to return their sort of cash flow earnings base to normal levels again. So do you see or do you have to sort of rebalance from overvalued uh, sectors to undervalued ones uh, or from sectors with bleak prospects to more brighter ones? So I think what you don't need to do in this market is to go hunting in the extremely cheap sectors. So, um, you know, given how how quality assets have fallen, um, you don't need to go hunting in the bargain basement. You've got some very high quality assets now at extremely low prices. So I think that's the first point to, to, to make. Um, the second thing is also to consider which companies have done very well or whose share prices have done very well in this environment. So the one company that we uh, are very overweight in is, is British American Tobacco. Um, they had a capital markets day and you know confirmed that actually they've seen very little impact from the coronavirus on on cigarette sales so you know there you're seeing quite a strong share price and you know maybe at this point you you, you say actually i'm happy to sell some of my bat shares and invest in companies which are still high quality but whose share prices have fallen substantially so take advantage of of you know where the markets um happy about the earnings stability of a company in this environment and rather buy companies which are going much cheaper but are equally high quality and have good long-term growth prospects. So what are you thinking about the equity portfolios in the current environment? What, what are the big investment opportunities? Um, I think, you know, if you look at the, uh, so the first thing to comment there is the just generally the markets are very cheap and particularly uh, in South Africa you know if you look at our market we're now trading close to a price to book of one we haven't seen those types of valuations in 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 many many years so we got close in the global financial crisis we got close after the IT bubble uh, we got uh, close in the the Russian crisis in in 1998 um, yeah we, we we haven't seen the South African market get close to a price to book of one probably in 40 years um, so this is, if you're looking at the market relative to history, this is as cheap as it as it gets. And so what you don't want to be doing here is to be panicking and saying, actually, you know, what do I need to do um, in this market? You know, often the best advice actually is to sit on your hands and do nothing. Uh, given where the valuations of the South African market are today, you don't want to be selling equities at, at, at this point. So so we've got two investors. There's and the, the question really is what would your advice be to those that are currently in the market uh, relative to those that have currently got funds to invest uh, I think you are leading to the to the point where is it time to invest in equities so so there I'd say you know the first thing that we consider is valuation so where are we in valuation space and if you look at the market um, currently, where are we trading? Um, you know, so you can put together a well diversified uh, portfolio today in the South African market with a dividend yield in excess of 6%. Um, and for us, it's important to say, well, what are the dividends going to look like in three to five years' time? And I think what we can say with a fair degree of confidence is that dividends from South Africa, even given what's happening in the market at the moment, are probably going to be higher in five years' time. Um, you know, so if you can match a 6% dividend yield in a portfolio plus, you know, some decent growth in dividends over a five-year time horizon, I think you make a lot of uh, a good money. Um, another way to look at it is to look at the price to book of the market. So, um, you know, at the, at the moment, the South African market is trading on close to price to book of one. If you go back only a month ago, you were trading close to a price to book of one and a half. So the market has derated significantly, um, you know, and you almost have never not made good money on a five year view when the market has traded on a price to book of one. Um, you know, so as, as dire as the sort of next six months or one year might look, um, the market as a whole actually looks very, very good value on, on a five-year view. Ross, we really want to well, thank you uh, for your insight into our equity portfolios. Uh, we really hope that you found that useful. And if you want to know a little bit more about Prudential's equity funds, 
please contact your financial advisor or contact our client services center. Thank you once again.